reading chapter 22, you may remember that space is one of those things we need to remove in order to think spiritually. Swedenborg writes, So far as thoughts partake of time, space and matter, they are limited and confined, but are unlimited and extended so far as they do not partake of these, since the mind is in that measure raised above bodily and worldly things. For example, heaven is not a place, it is a state of being. Heaven is not outside an angel, but is within him. And the appearance of being in heaven comes from the state of heaven as it exists within a person. It is in accordance with the heaven that is within him that every angel receives the heaven that is outside him. And the good which flows from love and charity is heaven itself within man. Yet it does appear as though heaven is a place that we inhabit and the environments we find ourselves in and the people we find ourselves in company with all reflect our inner nature. We attract and gravitate towards those things and people that are most like ourselves. Those who are in like states are near to each other and those in unlike states are at a distance and spaces in heaven are simply the external conditions corresponding to the internals. But in reading this chapter, I recall what is said in chapter 16 about the four quarters in heaven. And we find there the statement that the Lord causes the angels to look to him whithersoever they turn. And elsewhere, Swedenborg writes, all without exception in heaven turn their face towards the Lord and this happens whatever direction they turn their face. And during the week I found myself discussing the debates we engage in in modern society with a friend. How they get so divisive and descend so quickly into volatility and hostility and violence. And we see it in politics and especially as it's portrayed in the media and we, we rarely see political opponents enjoying each other's company or sharing a laugh. And we see it on social media too and everything to do with the COVID-19 pandemic as frustrations boil over into name calling and violence. You see, when we hold strong views, it's so easy to believe that the people who see the world in exactly the same way as I do must therefore be good. And that all those who see the world in a different way, with a different viewpoint, must either be mistaken or misled or unthinking or stupid or even evil. But what I see here is the fact that the angels can allow for the possibility that while they don't always see eye to eye with others, those others can still be part of heaven and they can still be led by the divine. So to have friends with entirely different, even opposing views to our own, and nevertheless still be able to accept them as people of integrity, and intelligence and value, that is the very definition of heaven. So how do you cope with differing opinions? Especially if you have a strong emotional investment in a particular issue. As always, you're welcome to read along with us or read ahead if you prefer. Feel free to ask any questions you may have and put them in the comments below. Enjoy the journey.